Hey, what's up? I'm going to show off the Spyderco Persistence that I just finished up this weekend. And uh, it's one of the ones I first put in my shop uh, for the G10 handle. I think this one was a very close second to that Tenacious that I did. So uh just kind of had the bucket of parts just laying around and then just kind of realized, hey man, that one is super close to being done. So uh, here we are. I just went ahead and finished up the little things that it needed and I think it looks great. Nothing too funky on the handles, no texture or anything like that. But you know, that's not a bad thing. So uh, what I was shooting for here... I don't know if I said that. Spyderco Persistence is what this is. Um, what I was shooting for is the Strider-esque kind of uh, concealed carry, you know, Strider-ish concealed carry G10, just round and smooth. Something very EDC friendly. That was the goal of this knife. Something very low-key, not a tactical knife. There's no lanyard hole. Left them out, left all the extra screw holes and stuff. Here's the old scale. Left all that crap off. Uh, reshaped the handle quite a bit, especially up front in this guard area. You see the persistence stock regular scale here. Has this big funky guard on it. Um, just kind of looks ugly to me. Also has this point in the back. I rounded that off in a good reason. This is a little bit of a hot spot on these knives. The persistence, anyways. This hump here. So you can see I rounded that out. Rounded off the guard. Also, or rounded this whole front. Very subtle, but it makes a lot of difference in looks. At least I think. It's a world. A world of difference. Just that small. Now it looks a little more organic. It feels like the flow just kind of all goes together. So here's the contour you can see. Again with that concealed carry I tried to bring it right to the liners pretty much all the way down. So I want this very thin very pocket friendly. I did uh, etch and stonewash the liners and the back spacers. Did not touch the stop pin. You don't want to etch the stop pin when you etch the metal, it actually takes off a tiny bit of metal. And parts like the stop pin, I don't know if you can see, my camera may not pick up on this. I even tape off my blades so that they do not etch on the lock face area. So that way lockup is still perfect. Because if I were to let this etch and let the liner etch, lockup might be coming all the way across and almost touching this liner over here. Sounds crazy, but when you etch both parts, you know, when you take off a little bit of the surface of the metal, you know, it fiddles with the lockup. So, anyways, that's why there's shiny spacers in there. All right, so here you can see I put some glow dots in there. Let me charge those up with my Surefire E1B. Had this for a few years. When they first come out, I jumped on one. Glad I did because shortly after, within a few months, they jacked up the price on them. An awesome light. Maybe I should do a review or something like that. Alright, so I uh, I really like glow on a knife. Uh, not only just because it's like trick, but it's also like practical when you go out at night or whatever. Maybe you drop it while you're camping. Um, but I don't like a lot of it. Too much just looks tacky. There's the knife sideways. I'll disappear. There it is. Anyways, um... You know, you probably feel the same way. Just too much is tacky. When it's done tastefully, like that, I think it's a trick. So if you can see, I added a low rider clip on here too. So that's the thing, no lanyard hole. I kind of wanted just a little bit of this knife poking out. But, you know, maybe it could look like a... Not really knife-like. This kind of clip is small and minimalist. And definitely uh, disappears in your hand when you grip the knife. And without this hump on the back, your finger can come all the way down here, your pinky. 
you know, and you can do some heavy cutting with this little guy. Certainly no hot spots. So there it is. Refinished, reground all that made in China and all that crap off. If you can see, here's the stock blade. Oh, there's one more thing I want to show you on this blade. So you can see I kind of reshaped the spine on this. And it's a little more pointy. Not by a whole lot, but definitely a little bit. Um, ground off all this stuff, all this made in China stuff on there. Um, here we go. I always like to show this just because it shows that I'm trying to really do the best job I can. When I round these spines, if you can see this shape here and how even it is, that shows that you know I'm rounding this spine even all the way down. Just a little touch of class. So that's it, guys. I built this one for me, but I'm really looking for a compressor. I need a blasting cabinet and stuff, so probably will be selling this. I got blade centering in case you wanted to see that. And again, the, the milling you can see right here. So that that liner has somewhere to go when the blade is closed. The detent. Cool little EDC. This is definitely not a video to sell you anything, so I'll list it on blade forms. If you're really interested, you can PM me here. Cool, guys. Well, thank you so much for the support. Um, I will catch you on the next video. Tons of more videos coming up. I think I'm uploading two or three tonight. So look forward to that. All right, guys. I can never balance these things. I don't even know why I try. Stay. <laughs> See ya. Whoop, there it went. <laughs> Bye.